Hello and welcome to another episode of Bamboo Talk with Bamboo Batu. I'm Fred Hornaday from Bamboo Batu. If you love bamboo, check out my website, B-A-M-B-U-B-A-T-U.com. All things bamboo, hundreds of free articles, lots of fun stuff, lots of cool pictures. If you want to talk more about bamboo in specifics, I'm also available for private consultations. More information and links below in the show notes. Check it out. Today we're talking about the future of bamboo. Bamboo has been around for thousands of years. People have been using it for many, many things for thousands of years. It's nothing new, but lately there has been so much innovation and such a rediscovery. We are literally living through a renaissance of bamboo and it's, it's a fascinating, fantastic time to be alive. So let's dig into the future of bamboo. And one thing I want to point out is that the future of bamboo will not take place in the metaverse. Yeah. Sorry about that. And the future of bamboo may not be closely related to cryptocurrency, but let's move on. The current state of affairs, we are surrounded with doom and gloom. The climate crisis continues to intensify. If you check out the weather in your area and other surrounding areas or other parts of the world, you'll see that the weather is no longer what it used to be. Um, yeah, we can laugh about it, but it's actually pretty crazy. Um, strange things going on. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it snows when you don't expect it and it's like, Ooh, let's build a snowman. Other times there's a tornado uh, that tears through and destroys your neighborhood. Not so cool. Um, some bad stuff going on. The carbon dioxide levels in the air are now at about 420 parts per million. That is well above and beyond what is considered a safe level of about 350 parts per million, which is already quite far above pre-industrial levels, which were about 280 parts per million. So we're about 50% above those pre-industrial levels and no sign of those CO2 levels going down, which means that, um, we've got some, yeah, it's, it's bad news. Um, but rather than panic, which is not a totally unreasonable response to the situation, uh, rather than panic, let's try looking at some more productive solutions and among them, guess what? Yeah. Bamboo for sure. Um, great. Uh, tool for climate change mitigation. Uh, already the world uh, governments, public and private organizations are uh, pledging towards carbon neutrality uh, with various deadlines of 2030, 2040, 2050. I understand some of the largest oil companies in the world recently postponed their carbon neutrality goals from, I think from 2030, scooched it back to 2050, which is pretty disappointing. Um, disappointing is a nice way to put it. Infuriating would be another way to put it. There's other words to express it, which I won't use on my YouTube channel, but yeah, it is very important that we reduce our carbon dioxide emissions and with the carbon dioxide levels as high as they are, Right now, we need to do more than reduce emissions. We need to, we need to be drawing CO two out of the atmosphere in a in a serious, serious way, uh, at unprecedented levels. Um, it's truly unprecedented because it's never really been an issue to remove, uh, to remove CO two. The trees and plants have been doing a pretty good job of it for the, the previous uh, several billion years on planet Earth. Um. Okay. Maybe the trees haven't been there for billions of years, but the last, uh, the last, uh, several hundred million years, at least, um, we can dig into the, the timelines later, but let's talk about carbon avoidance. Um, producing less CO2, emitting less CO2 is absolutely crucial. And that's what most of these, um, carbon neutrality goals are about. And so to reduce emissions, um, there's lots of ways to develop technology and expand technology that is an alternative to fossil fuels, fossil fuels being the primary culprit behind these high CO2 levels. So namely that includes coal, 
natural gas, any petroleum products, uh, crude oil, etc. So things like solar panels, solar energy, uh, wind farms, geothermal energy, uh, hydrogen plants, things like that will produce energy without these um, CO2 emissions. So this is what we call carbon avoidance, pursuing projects that will generate the same electricity, but without the CO2 emissions, which is great. We're not contributing to more CO2, but at the levels that I mentioned earlier, we need to do more than just stop producing CO2. We need to remove CO2. We need plants and, uh, there's, there's, you know, there's nature-based solutions like plants and bamboo. There's also some man-made solutions for carbon removal. Unfortunately, most of those man-made solutions are kind of in the realm of science fiction at this point. There's like these carbon vacuums that suck all the CO2 out of the atmosphere, theoretically. And theoretically isn't really good enough right now because we need to be removing carbon like today and not focusing on technology that's going to remove carbon 30 or 40 years from now or even five or 10 years from now is, is a long way off when you see what the climate's been doing in the last few years. So um, not that we should abandon those technologies and research innovation in that area, but we need, we need solutions that we can deploy immediately. And the best of which are nature-based solutions, which um, first of all, they're nature-based, so they don't have any potential side effects. Um, that's a good thing. I don't like side effects. And the other thing is that nature-based solutions have worked really well for a long, long time. And until, until we, until our, our species, um, cut down so many of these trees, which we're doing a good job of carbon removal. So bringing us back to bamboo, bamboo, uh, metabolizes, photosynthesizes more quickly than, than any other plant except for maybe uh, seaweed or something. Giant kelp is a, is a great photosynthesizer, but as far as woody terrestrial plants, bamboo grows faster than anything. And with that fast growth rate, we have a very fast um, metabolism, which means it's photosynthesizing more quickly. Photosynthesis, as I hope you recall, is the process by which the plants use their chlorophyll to turn sunlight into food, i.e. sugar. And as they do that, they are absorbing CO2 and exhaling oxygen, which is basically the opposite of what the rest of us do. Animals and plants, animals, sorry, animals and humans included. We are, of course, inhaling oxygen, exhaling CO2, but it's not our CO2 exhalation that is the problem. However, it could be the plant's oxygen exhalation, which could be the solution. Um, by absorbing massive quantities of CO2 from the air. So bamboo planting is catching on fast and with net neutrality, or, um, sorry, carbon neutrality goals and emission reduction goals and climate change mitigation goals, bamboo is, is taking a big stage in the spotlight. People are really excited about bamboo. People are trying to plant massive farms of bamboo. And I am speaking to people on a weekly basis, um, hearing from people almost daily about projects in which they want to farm thousands of hectares of bamboo. And that is um, totally motivated by carbon removal. And part of that motivation is the fact that carbon removal can generate carbon credits, which are an interesting financial mechanism that gives a uh, financial incentive for, for climate positive projects, uh, including carbon avoidance, like, like solar and wind things, and also carbon removal, which would be like forestation projects, uh, bamboo cultivation, as well as biochar. I have to mention biochar because biochar is amazing for carbon removal. You take the biomass of the plant where the carbon is stored in a solid form, you cook it down in the biochar, which is highly concentrated carbon um, substance. You bury it in the soil where it provides an amazing fertility enhancing 
uh, quality to the soil, like a uh, fertilizer substitute. It's not really a fertilizer, but is it, it is a fertilizer replacement or fertilizer substitute biochar. And when you do that, you're making the soil way better. You're getting better yields on your crops. And relevant to this conversation, you are storing large quantities of CO2 underground, creating what's called a carbon sink where the carbon is stored. And with biochar, that carbon sink is a long-term carbon sink. The carbon stays underground for a long, long time, uh, centuries, even up to a thousand years or more. Uh, we can see this in the soil in the Amazon. Um, check that out. Uh, Google Terra Preta, which is uh, that black, rich soil of the Amazon, which is loaded with carbon from way back in the day. So bamboo cultivation is, is gaining huge interest, gaining traction, and we are going to see a lot more of it. This is the future of bamboo. Um, the last couple of years, I've been seeing lots of pictures like the one on the left. Lots of people starting bamboo farms, uh, looking for information on how to start a bamboo farm, how to cultivate bamboo, where to get seeds, where to get seedlings. There's a race to get bamboo in the ground. And as that race goes on, the bamboo will proliferate. And that means fast forward seven or eight years zzz, up to 2030. Uh, when these net, uh, when these, uh, carbon neutrality goals are, uh, starting to kick in and the zero emission goals and things like that. And by that time we will have lush, mature bamboo forestry, um, in places where it had not been previously. Um, so all over Africa, Southern Asia, Central America, there's, there's people wanting to plant bamboo big time. Um, even in Europe, in uh, Portugal, Italy, Greece, people are planting bamboo in the United States, um, from California to Florida, up to North Carolina, uh, in the Midwest, people are getting into planting bamboo because it's amazing. And the future for bamboo has never looked brighter. It's unfortunate that it was, uh, this climate crisis scenario that drove us to the point, uh, where we finally recognized the benefits of bamboo but better late than never. And let's hope that the future will just look greener and greener as more bamboo comes into our lives. Hope you enjoyed this short talk about the future of bamboo. If you've got questions or comments, punch them in below in the comment section. As always, tell your friends about Bamboo Batu, subscribe to the channel, make Bamboo Batu your new favorite, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.